and welcome to the show. You're watching Tech 24, France 24's tech show. As the novel coronavirus continues to spread and claim victims, we tell you how technology is helping halt the outbreak, from the development of a vaccine to the use of drones and even artificial intelligence that can help spot early warnings and predict where it could pop up next. And in Test 24, we tried the Samsung Galaxy Fold, a phone that seamlessly turns into a mini tablet. Now, researchers in China, the U.S. and France are working on developing a vaccine for the novel coronavirus. If all goes well, they may run the first tests in three months. And in the best case scenario, a vaccine could be available by mid-year at the very earliest. Well, let's now welcome our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Kalkar. Hello, Dan. Hello, Julia. So if you could try to explain to us, how do you actually develop a vaccine? Well, first of all, the function of a vaccine is to train the immune system to recognize and combat the, uh, these microbes, whether it's viruses, bacteria, or parasites. Now, in order to do that, there are certain molecules from the pathogens themselves, from uh, viruses or bacteria. Uh, they are called antigens. They have to be injected into the uh, human body so that you develop uh, this resistance. Uh, the principle of vaccine making has uh, remained almost the same since 1885 when uh, Louis Pasteur administered the first rabies vaccine, which kind of revolutionized the, the vaccination process and the, the science of vaccination. Uh, he, the boy, uh, Joseph Meister, he was suffering from rabies and uh, the vaccine uh, cured him. Uh, so since then, it's almost been the same uh, principle. So for example, vaccines are made by using uh, attenuated or weakened form of these microbes or vaccine can, can also be made by using uh, killed microbes. So basically these viruses or bacteria are, are cultured in a lab and then they are inactivated or killed and then they're used to make vaccines. Of course, making vaccines in the lab, uh, in the research stage is the first step, but then comes the testing part. Those, then the testing is done first on animals. It can take uh, some months, but then the most important step are the uh, clinical trials on humans. And this can take a longer time because there's no room for error, so you have to conduct you to these trials. to wait to be able to see the side effects also. Exactly, and you have right. to conduct these trials on several thousands of people. And in order to ensure that there are no adverse effects in even the smallest uh, you know, uh, portion of this group, so that's why uh, vaccines normally take uh, several months to years. Now, in some instances, it's actually the microbes that pose the most challenging challenges in developing a vaccine. Well, yes, uh, there are some examples in which uh, the diseases have uh, been detected for a long time, but we still haven't been able to develop a uh, vaccine. The classic example is that of AIDS. You know, the AIDS virus was first isolated in 1983, so it's been almost 37 years uh, since we have been trying to develop a vaccine. And the reason behind uh, our failure to uh, develop a vaccine is because of the nature of this virus, the HIV which keeps on mutating. So even in a single person, you'll have these different forms of viruses. So it's very difficult to uh, find uh, antibodies or even a vaccine against uh, in, in such scenario. Now, Dan, let's talk about coronaviruses. Of course, the most known is uh, SARS virus. Uh, they are characterized as being zoonotic. What does that mean? Well, zoonotic means that these viruses have jumped from animals to humans. So its original source were animals. And some of the biggest outbreaks of diseases have been uh, those of zoonotic diseases. Just to give you some examples, there's the Ebola virus, which originated from bats. Uh, there's the H1N1 swine flu uh, virus, which originated from pigs. Then you Zika. have Zika virus. Then there is tuberculosis, smallpox, rabies, plague. Almost 75% of the diseases, uh, they come from animals. So this is what zoonosis. And it's because we actually domesticated animals. That Part of it, yes. Today yeah, we're, exactly. we're experiencing all these diseases. Thank you very much, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Now, meanwhile, in China, authorities are using technology to try to contain the epidemic. In a video posted by the Chinese state-run Global Times, drones are used to scold people for walking around outside without masks. Electronic tags for people under coronavirus home quarantine are also set to be deployed. Catherine Bennett has the story. Like something out of science fiction, this drone, equipped with a megaphone, hovers before a crowd, blaring a warning. The operator is a local traffic cop. You, the handsome man with the telephone, where's your mask? Put it on. 
Hey you on the bike, put on your mask when you're in the streets. Don't endanger your fellow citizens. Not all of the drones are operated by the authorities. Some of the clips have been posted on social media to encourage preventative measures. Yes, ma'am, it's the drone talking to you. You shouldn't come out without a mask. Go back inside and wash your hands. The drone can see you. You can't be serious. This isn't the time to be playing cards. Go home, all of you. Drones aren't just being used for surveillance, but for more practical purposes as well. Chinese authorities are keen to show that they're tackling the crisis, like in this video by The People's Daily, a newspaper that serves as the Communist Party's mouthpiece. The government is using drones to avoid potentially infected people coming into contact with the doctor. Citizens are told to come to their window or walk onto their balcony, and drones equipped with thermal imaging check that they don't have a fever. Zones in lockdown are also under surveillance. In Hong Kong, people who have been temporarily quarantined have been given electronic bracelets, so that authorities can check they're staying home. In a period of crisis, the line between individual freedom and the fight to contain the epidemic is becoming increasingly fine. The WHO first notified the public of a flu-like outbreak in China on January 9, 2020, a couple of days after the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention had gotten the word out. But a Canadian health monitoring platform actually beat both of them to the punch, alerting its customers as early as December 30. Dan, how does the company work with that algorithm? What kind of data is it looking for? Well, the company Blue Dot, it uses uh, the artificial intelligence algorithms in order to identify disease outbreaks and also to predict how this uh, or how these diseases may spread. Uh, so, for example, they um, analyze about 100,000 articles in 65 different languages. So, in this case, they must have analyzed uh, some uh, articles from the Chinese uh, media locally, and they also picked some information from online forums. Uh, and then the second part is that they are, have additional information sources like commercial flight information. So, for example, they analyzed uh, the most popular destinations for people from Wuhan, and they predicted that uh, there's a possibility that the, um, there could be cases of uh, this disease in Thailand and Japan, and it turned out to be true. So this is the kind of information they use. Now, social media platforms are struggling to debunk myths about this virus as well. Well, social media companies are trying to do a lot of fact-checking. Just to give you an example, uh, the social media company in China, Tencent, is taking help from doctors and medical professors to do this fact-checking and bring this information on their popular messaging app, WeChat. Thank you. We're going to move on now to Test24. A new wave of foldable phones is expected to hit the market soon. Samsung has already unveiled its model, and it's called the Galaxy Fold. And I was really impressed by the quality of the screen, Dan. Well, yes, it's a joy to watch videos, to play games when the phone is unfolded. Right now, it's folded, and you have this traditional screen in front of you. It's a 4.6-inch screen. But when you unfold it, it turns into a 7.3-inch mini tablet. As you can see, uh, there's a multitasking option. So right now, I have three applications open at the same time. I can use them simultaneously without any problem. And if you want, you can get rid of the other two applications very easily. And play, uh, in this case, we are playing our own video, a Tech24 video. Right. So you can see it, it really makes a difference when it, really it comes does. to uh, watching media on a, a pocket device. And now, the other feature of this phone is that there are six cameras. As you can see, there are three cameras at the back. When it's folded, there's a selfie camera as well. And when you unfold it, there are two more cameras at the front. Uh, so yes, Samsung, uh, it's, it's, as you mentioned, it's a wave of uh, foldable phones. Right, I mean, this could soon become the new norm, right? Absolutely, because we have uh, other examples of foldable phones soon hitting the market in the form of uh, the Motorola Razr, you know, this iconic uh, Moto Razr brand. I think it was until the mid-2000s. I used to own one, right. and now it's come out in the new avatar. It's a foldable razor. So, but unlike uh, the Samsung Fold, which folds sideways, this folds uh, in a vertical fashion. So Upwards, you right. see this. And then there are also, uh, there's also a foldable phone uh, by Huawei. Thank you very much, Dan and Jay Cattlecar there. That brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech24, but do stay with us here on Press 24.